You know, for those people who said that a 12 team playoff would ruin college football, they did not watch the games on Saturday because what was an uneventful Saturday became a very eventful Saturday. Yeah, Dylan Sampson just scored again and the balls went 56 to nothing, but did we have some fun or what? We'll talk about that and much more next on the Food City Locker Room presented by Garza Law. This is the Players Show. So, Chris, I'm going to leave Jason out of this initial conversation. <laughs> I went into the closet to figure out what to wear for this show, and I lifted the orange jacket, and I kept hearing the voices of Christmas past, Jason, saying you only wear that after an Alabama, Florida, or Georgia win, so I put it back. And then I decided I needed to represent Florida and Auburn on this show. So this is what I came up with, Jason. So that's your explanation. I this like is it. why I wore that's this. Your explanation. It's a combination of looking that? like an Auburn Tiger and a Florida Gator. I've never seen thousands of people do this that were wearing <laughs> Tennessee orange. This right here. Which one is it? Just it's this one right here. I was trying not to rip my jacket. I mean, how cool <laughs> was Saturday? That wasn't cool. It wasn't that cool about doing a Gator Chomp. I was embarrassed. We don't Gator Chomp. Were you really, or were you quietly kind of doing it on a race? No, 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 no. You have to understand something. When you play football in Tennessee, yeah. you are wired to dislike those programs. Yeah, you don't but, just you stop know. doing that. So. Yeah, but does it change? I mean, did you do a little quiet yeah, down your I think, I think you're, you're, you're in the back of your head, you're hoping for them to win. You don't root for them. I, I'm did like you get him. a chomp? <laughs> Exactly. See? You, you, see? you almost made me say something inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got see? me. See? Hey, to, the point, to the point that I said when I started this, that would have been an uneventful Saturday every other year until now. Yeah, I think th this is what we talked about. Teams, you have to show up and play every single week. If you don't show up and play, things can happen. Look at Florida. Look at a lot of these schools that, sure. that actually showed up. They were calling for Billy Napier to be gone. Right? Oh, name all of so, them. So, Alabama, Alabama oh, that, that's a funny one. Oh, Alabama, that, was, that, was that, was funny. that was the best Three one. Three points? Oh, that was the best I one. I mean, and here's the thing, and we could sit here and talk about the UTEP win, but, I mean, the, the viewers would fall asleep just like they did during the game Saturday. I mean, it's just not entertaining. You, you look at, at all of those games on Saturday, Georgia is sitting there, and all of a sudden they're in the <laughs> SEC championship game. They'll play the winner of Texas, Texas A&M. It's crazy what happened Saturday. Uh, a ton of upsets this year. Um, there we might, go. Might be more next week or this week. You just never know. But Georgia's put themselves in a really good spot uh, to win the SEC and possibly get a first round bye. There's just so much parity. I mean, you look at it right there. Everybody has a shot, right? This Texas Texas A&M game is going to be a big game. I mean, Georgia has to play Georgia Tech this week. There's a lot of rivalry games, but I'm happy with the spot that we're in. We just have to take care of our business, go over to Nashville, and do what we do, and we'll be in. Where, where's Ole Miss on that? <laughs> Wait a minute, didn't, didn't Lane say he didn't want to go to Atlanta? Well, he's not going to Atlanta. He, he's you know what he said? Anywhere. He's going back to the SIP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we going to the SIP. <laughs> In all seriousness, okay, so you look at it now. You got what you wanted, both of you. You said you didn't want Tennessee to play in the SEC championship game. Yeah, I think that's important. D did you really want to go there and play an extra game with as banged up as you are? I mean, I think Kevin our, didn't. Our guests over here will tell you, rest is rest. and ke uh, That's a key thing yeah. at this point in the year. To be able to go and do that and have one game to get you where you need to be, I think that's important. So we have to go to Vanderbilt. We have to take care of business. Early game, cold start, but we just got to play fast. It's uh, going to be an 11 local time start. You look at Tennessee this year, and because of the profile of Tennessee, it's different than it was in previous years. You've played so many games at night, and this team practices in the morning. We've seen this team in the first three years play really well and different. Um, during the day, but this year at night, we've seen the slow starts. Now you finally get an opportunity to play an early game, so Tennessee should start fast in this one. Okay, so w with all the fun we've had, let's let's reel it back in here. Let's get serious. This is this is not your dad's Vanderbilt. Okay, Jackson Lampley's in. This is not Brad Lampley's Vanderbilt when he was playing at nope. Tennessee. Yeah, this is different. 100% is not the typical Vanderbilt. These guys are chippy. I mean, uh, this is their Super Bowl. I anytime you play them, they're going to be ready to play. I think this one's going to be a little bit more, more amped up. They have a lot to play for. They're bow eligible. They're going to try to make sure we don't get what we mm -hmm. need to be. That is huge. So we got to show up and play. If you don't play well, they will beat you. That's the difference between this year's Vanderbilt team and previous Vanderbilt teams. Sure. They have a quarterback that the has the Johnny Manziel type of aura to him. Yep. Uh, he wears number two. That's his idol. Uh, he's really good 
on the run, you better contain him, and you better make sure that you don't allow Vanderbilt to believe early. You know, I think a lot of that has to go with the crowd as well. Obviously, stadium's not big. We typically travel well there, but you got to take them out of it early. They feed off of that crowd. They kind of do that, and the quarterback will go. The orange crowd. Okay. Here's, here's the thing, if you, if you really look at it seriously, is that Tennessee's got everything right in front of them. Okay, you, if you, you, you go 5-0 and from here, you're national champions. That's, that's all you can ask for. The I think it's, 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 it's one game at a time, and I think that needs to be the mentality. You cannot overlook Vanderbilt. This can't be one of those games where you're not looking, looking up forward to playing and, and performing, right? You have to go there, play, and perform. You know how crazy it would be if you actually looked over a team this week with the opportunity to clinch a playoff spot? Like, I don't think Ole Miss overlooked Florida, but, like, they didn't ima- respect them. imagine overlooking a team this week, a team that you're better than, and it cost you an opportunity to go to the college football playoff. Don't be 2016 Vols. Every, everything should be heightened, right? Like, this should be, a, this should be urgent. Like, this Absolutely. is an urgent, urgent, urgent win. Let's just, let's just let's look at Vanderbilt. I mean, Alabama went and lost. Texas went, and it was a one-possession game late in that game. LSU was a close game on, on the road. I mean, you sit there and look at Vanderbilt. They're 6-5. and five. They're 3-4 and four in conference play. And I just remember when I got, I moved here in 1996, and Vanderbilt was kind of like, hey, that's the last game of the year. Let's just go have a good time. And everybody gets to play and get ready for the bowl game. If, if you watch the film of Vanderbilt, you're not going to overlook them. Now, if you look at the logo and you, know, you look at history, then you may. But, like, if you just watch the film, this is a, this is a good football team. 100%. They, they've they, lost they a lot, yeah, they've yeah. lost a lot of close games. And they, they've played hard in every game they play. Clark Lee's done a good job mm-hmm. with this program kind of transitioning forward. What's so funny, we've got to get to break is, is that when he went to the SEC media days, what, two years ago, I think it was, and he started talking about that he wanted Vanderbilt to compete for SEC championships, and everybody laughed him out of the SEC media days. It was like a big joke. Transfer portal makes a big difference when you get a quarterback in there that believes, got some good receivers on the outside as well, and, and you win a couple five. games. They're yeah. six and five. To your point, Chris, I mean, they could be eight and three just like that. A couple plays. Well, the real MVP is the administration who finally decided yeah. to, to start rewarding yeah. those players for their hard work and giving them the resources to be successful. Yeah. All right, let's uh, take a break. Uh, Jackson Lampley is going to come in here in just a few minutes. We'll visit with him. Uh, we'll also talk about what's next for Tennessee, not only Vanderbilt, but what could be after that. Don't want to look ahead, but we will a little bit on the Food City Locker Room presented by Garza Law. Attention shoppers, don't forget to ask our certified butchers for great recipe tips. This is an authentic butcher shop where meat is hand cut in store, beef is ground fresh daily, and expert advice from a certified butcher is always free of charge. (laughs) Free advice? That's what I call value. The quality I crave, the value I count on. Nobody does food like Food City. At Glass Doctor, our trained specialists are experts at fixing foggy and cracked glass. Looks great. You're all set. What we can't fix is your view. Call the Glass Doctor, we'll fix your pain. Oh, yeah. I was coming home and a lady hit me head on. It totaled my car, it fractured my right heel, and it bruised me up really badly. The Garza Law Firm, they were very compassionate, but yet they were very detailed. They didn't let me down. They never stopped fighting. It helped me regain confidence in law firms. I would definitely recommend the Garza Law Firm. The Garza Law Firm, let us help. the star around here until Glass Doctor installed this perfect shower enclosure. Now they look at me like, well, there you go. Call the Glass Doctor, we'll fix your pains. The Locker Room is brought to you by Food City, NPG Brain and Concussion, Knoxville Smiles, Glass Doctor, and Garza Law. 
So it's, uh, I do want to bring it back in just a little bit. It's, it's, a, it's a little hard to nitpick a 56 nothing win, um, but it was a slow start on Saturday, and we talked last week about trying to develop an offensive identity. You're going into your 12th game of the season. You're still trying to figure out an offensive identity. Did we learn anything at all in a, in a blowout like it's, that? It's a, it's a struggle. I mean, we didn't start the way we wanted to start. I think everybody knows that. But obviously we continued to play, and I think continuing to play, making some plays, kind of just getting the game over and done with. But we got to figure out the starts. I mean, there's plays that are open. I think the first play of the game, Nico kind of throws a little bit behind one of the receivers. So the flow just doesn't start, and you can't get it going. But you got to keep pushing. you got to keep going. You won the game, so on to the next. I mean, at the end of the day, he was 88%. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he threw four touchdowns, 200-something uh, yards. 17 to 23, 209, four touchdowns, I, I, no interceptions. I do understand this UTEP, and he did start the game throwing the ball behind some receivers, but at the end of the day, he was 88% throwing the football, and three receivers caught touchdown passes. Excuse me, two receivers, three touchdowns between those two. Um, you had a field day rushing the football. The defense had a shutout. It was UTEP. They stink. Uh, but you took care of business. That's what we wanted to see, right? <laughs> yeah. We wanted to see them take care of business. Unless we they, did, did. They, they did that. You know the show I, airs in El Paso, by the way, right? I don't care. The truth oh, okay. is the truth. They know. They stink. They know. So do you, do you learn anything in identity? What is your identity now going to Vanderbilt? We run the football. I mean, that, that, that's been the identity for what it is. I mean, you're going to be tough. You've got you to play hard between those hashes and, and run the ball again. That's our identity? I, that, that's what we've done. Uh, it used to be tempo. It's, it's not so much that anymore. Uh, we are a running football team that will take shots. We just have to hit more on those shot plays. Like, we're not going to be 2022 offense. But when we take those shot plays, when we're throwing it deep, uh, or you, you see some wrinkles from Josh Heupel uh, from a play calling standpoint, we have to hit those. We can't have drop passes. We can't have throws behind the receivers. We can't have holding calls or things like that that, that get us beat. Uh, we just have to hit the deep shots when they are available. Okay, so let's let, let's briefly touch on that because when Heupel came here, the M.O. was fast-paced offense taking deep shots, fast-paced offense taking deep shots, but running the football. Underestimated the importance of running the football, but you know what I'm saying? They're not fast-paced in the offense right now. They're not taking deep shots. Is he is Heupel having to adjust? Well, he, he's adjusting with his receiving core. I mean, he. We've taken some deep shots earlier in the season. We didn't hit them, right? Didn't hit you them. have to hit those shots. I mean, you just have to hit them. So guys are running open. You got to make those plays. And I think that's where we just need to see the progression go. Against Vanderbilt, you got to take some shots. And when you throw them, you got to hit them. I got an idea. Instead of relying on deep shots for explosive plays, how about you take a slant route, catch it, and go make somebody miss and go make a play yourself? Yeah. How about you do that? Yeah. That's a, that could be an explosive play as well. So the problem is the coaches are having to do too much to manufacture. How come? Time it's almost like over, you're over well, because of, are well, you back? Are you back? Are you back to your position room? Are you upset with the wide receiver? I'm not upset. I mean, I'm not upset. The, the truth is the truth. We're not explosive enough on the outside as we need to be to be a, a championship quality team. The, your defense is the reason why you have a chance in a college football playoff. So you're playing to your defense by not running tempo as fast as you have in previous years. That's why the tempo is not as quick because you, you don't want to put your defense in bad spots. When, when your defense is bad, you want to go fast, fast, mm -hmm, fast because mm -hmm. hopefully you get a turnover, yeah. something happens, you can get the ball, you score quick. Now you're at 14 nothing, and you, you're playing with the lead. You're playing ahead. You can call plays much differently when you're doing that. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask both of you this, and then we're going to bring Jackson Lampley in here. Do, are you telling me you think that Heupel's adjusted not because they're not hitting the deep shots, and, and, but they're doing this because their defense is so good? Yes. I think it's a mixture. I think it's, your defense is good, but your offense, as far as your explosion type of players, are not as good as they were two years ago. I think it's a mix of both. Huh. So is that the identity? We've been searching for this identity right here for the last month. Just gotta, I mean, run the ball, play really good defense, and, and make the plays when you make them. If you call a shot play and a guy's running open, catch the ball. It's that simple. That's simple. Okay, cool. Well, we got it all figured out. It just took us all season long. What's the date now? We're almost to December, and we finally just figured it out. Game We're almost 12. Thanksgiving. Okay, so let's bring Jackson Lampley in. Jackson's, you know, been around here for a while. I, I guess let's ask the question. Do you feel like that there's been adjustments made because the defense is so good or adjustments made because you're trying to figure out where your strengths are? I mean, it just depends. We have a great defense out here. We have a great running back in Dylan Sampson, mm -hmm. and, 
you know, we've kind of established our identity as an offense this year as kind of the team that will run it down your throat. And I feel like that's been very beneficial to us. And also, when you got a running back who's had, what, 22 rushing touchdowns this mm -hmm. year, you kind of want to give him the ball. Jackson, you talk about the running back, you being an offensive lineman. What's it like being out there on the field when they know you're running the ball, you know you're running it, and they can't stop it? Uh, you know, you get some confidence out of there because, I mean, when you're hitting, you know, runs for like five yards, six yards, and then all of a sudden, you know, Dylan breaks one for about 15. It, it's, it gives you a lot of confidence in yourself. And then um, also just as a unit for our offensive line, just the ability just to help us create space and, and win games. All right, hang tight. We're going to send Swain over there for the Food City player perspective. Um, but as we go to break, uh, Zakai not going to be here for the show tonight because of the fact that they had, they had therapy tonight, Bahamas. they had film session. Uh, he's concentrating on a basketball team, which, oh, by the way, had a lot of success in the Bahamas. Uh, Chaz Lanier is legit. Chaz Lanier needs to get some pub. We got really spoiled with Dalton Connect last year, but what this dude did the other night, starting five for five from three, I mean, he, he's still making shots. He was on fire, and that's, that's the difference between this team and last year's team. Is they got other guys besides just Dalton Connect guys. Um, to, to go out there and make plays. And we're going to see other guys step up, too. Igor was good uh, as well. Good to see uh, Darlene Stone Dubar uh, make his debut. He brings a level of toughness and athleticism. Uh, but this, this team is going to be really good, and Chazanier is as good as advertised. You know, there's, there's legitimately no um, uh, conscience with him. Well, I mean, he'll, he'll miss, hit a, hit a, he'll hit miss a three pointer and get the rebound and shoot it again. And he'll shoot it again. Well, he was told to do that. I mean, no. he has the green light, the ultimate green light given to him by Rick Barnes. And Rick Barnes has gotten on to him for not, for not shooting, shooting it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, so, I'm, I'm totally yeah, cool with that yeah. because, I mean, obviously Dalton Connect had that light and, and now Chaz does. I loved the interview, the post championship yeah, cool. interview. Yeah where they were all around Chaz Very Lanier, cool. and they, it, you could just see the camaraderie on this team. I think a lot of times people don't understand how close teams are, and when you hang out with one another and you're truly friends all outside and of the court. how important And how important that is, sure. that's when you get those moments. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just important. Yeah. Culture, right. culture over everything. Speaking of camaraderie, Jason's hoping to have some camaraderie uh, with Jackson Lampley over there for the Food City Player Perspective. As we go to break, oh, by the way, uh, scan the QR code, and you can pick up your Get Neil and Loud shirt, your raised the roof shirts over at uh, Thompson Bowling Arena at Food City Center, all to support Zakai's assist. When we come back, Food City Player Perspective. The Locker Room is brought to you by Food City, Exterior Home Solutions, D1 Training, Lakewood Capital Group, Ted Russell Ford, and Garza Law. Attention shoppers, don't forget to ask our certified butchers for great recipe tips. This is an authentic butcher shop where meat is hand cut in store, beef is ground fresh daily, and expert advice from a certified butcher is always free of charge. <laughs> free advice? That's what I call value. The quality I crave, the value I count on. Nobody does food like Food City. I see Marcos' role in the community as somebody that people can look up to. Marcos Garza is very thoughtful. He pays attention to the needs of the people in the community. He's somebody that's very unselfish, somebody that's going to always be there. Marcos Garza will work as hard as he can to get the best results for you. In the future, no matter where I'm playing, no matter what the team I'm playing for, I'll always be on Garza's team. The Garza Law Firm is Mama ZZ approved. The Garza Law Firm. Let us help. Hey, Sturl, you ready to go to the top? Man, I can't believe you guys been doing this for 25 years. Oh, baby. Now, this is what I call a rooftop party. We have 25 years experience in roofing and exterior renovations, and we're backed by the best. Are you ready to get your rooftop party started? Give us a call, 865-524-5888. Knoxville Smiles, depending on us to make your smile better. Knoxville Smiles, are you happy with your smile today? Knoxville Smiles, we're all about smiles. Hey Lance, what makes you smile? Uh, pancake blocks. <laughs> <laughs> 
What's up, guys? It's Devin Driscoll, owner of D1 Sports Training. We know in 2024, convenience is king. So we have locations not just in Hardin Valley, but now one in Maryville, in Farragut, and in Morristown with more soon to come. So keep an eye out. We want to bring D1 Sports Training to everyone in East Tennessee. Hi, I'm Dr. Jody Griffin. I'm a dentist here in Knoxville, Tennessee. In 22, I had a wakeboard tower hit me on the head and give me a concussion. In my office, I show x-rays to my patients so they can see their teeth. I needed somebody to do the same thing for my brain, so I went to MPG. They did an EEG of my brain, and they were able to show me the activity of my brain and give me a diagnosis and a treatment plan. So I choose MPG because brains is what they do, and that's all they do. Time now for the Food City Players Perspective. A look inside the locker room with the Vols. I'm right, here with Jackson Lampley, and uh, you are a legacy player. Give wow. a, let us know. Your dad played here. We know mm -hmm. that. Let us know the first moment you became a Tennessee fan. Were you born as a Tennessee fan, or did that happen a little bit later uh, in life? Well, honestly, I mean, I was kind of born into it. Yeah. I, 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 I can tell you about games that happened in, like, 09 and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, just growing up, I mean, I was the biggest UT fan ever, and it was kind of hard because there's a lot of – you know, Alabama and Florida were the two best teams in the country back in like 08, 09. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I've, I've had to stick with the balls all my life. But uh, so far, it's been very rewarding for me. How did it feel when you saw Dylan Sampson break the record for most touchdowns in one season? I know that means a lot for offensive linemen. Yeah, I, I was super excited about it. I really was. Um, you know, Sam's the type of guy that's going to put his you know, heart and soul out there for the team. And just seeing a guy like that get it, and then you know also seeing the impact that we had on in helping him, you know, get that uh, accomplishment is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Fans are, can be demanding. Um, they can. You know, we were talking during the what? break about uh, Nico going 88 mm -hmm. percent. Um, people want the fast start, but look, yesterday's game was a little bit different. It was mm -hmm. Senior Day. A lot of emotions uh, happened sure. at the beginning of the game. How did Senior Day affect you? Did it affect you at all? Well, you know, you have all the stuff going on at senior day. You're running out through the tee for the last time. You're, you're, you know, hugging Danny White and Coach Heupel and get to take the picture with your family. And, you know, really after I took the picture with my family, I just knew I had to walk back in. Yeah. And, and I kind of, you know, closed my eyes a little bit, took a deep breath, um, just try to get back in the mindset to be ready to play the game. And, and I felt like I got into the right mindset before that game. How hard was it to do it? You know, it was a little bit easier than I expected because I remember when I was a senior in high school, our senior night against uh, Baylor out of Chattanooga while I was playing at NBA, it, it was pretty hard to get back into that mindset. But for whatever reason, I think, you know, if, if you played at UT, you understand this, but that second you run out through the tee and, and you hear the roar of 100,000 people, you, you kind of get locked in. Last regular season game, mm. you are from the Mid-State. This game clinches an opportunity potentially to go to the college mm. football playoff, playing against Vanderbilt, mm. who would love nothing else to spoil that. Like what way. comes to mind for you? I mean, it's quite an honor to be able to play, you know, in my hometown again against Vanderbilt. Um, and obviously it's a big rivalry game. It really is. I think a lot of people like to talk a lot about, you know, Alabama and Florida and Georgia and all that. But, you know, Vanderbilt – hates us probably more than any other team out there and we still hate them and, and you know especially being from the mid-state you, you do have a little bit of a chip on your shoulder especially when you go back to West End and play Vanderbilt. Cooper Mays talked about leaving this place in a better place than he found it. Mm. How do you feel about what Cooper said? I, I completely agree. I mean that was one of the biggest reasons why I decided to come to Tennessee. Um, when I was you know when I committed to Tennessee uh, if you remember Coach Jones had just gotten fired um, and then there was the whole, you know, debacle of trying to find a new head coach, and, and we get Coach Pruitt. And, um, you know, really my whole goal was is to help bring Tennessee back to the way it was in the 90s. And then, um, you know, obviously with Coach Pruitt getting fired and Coach Heupel coming in, I really feel like he's allowed us to do that. And we went from being a team that was 3-7 and seven my second year to now being a playoff contender. It's been pretty special for us. Well, you definitely helped Tennessee get back to where it's supposed to be. 
you're definitely you. leaving Tennessee in a better place than you found it, man. So thank thanks you. so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Guys. Jackson, thank you so much. You said 08, 09. I graduated 07. I was <laughs> nervous you were going to say that. We were, we were in that group. So thank you so much, man. You did a nice job. Oh, thank hey, you. By, the, by the way, once I get rid of Swain because of his bad attitude every week and you're done, you want to fill smile. a spot? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. It'll be hey, fun. Hey, hey, make, hey, make sure when you wear <laughs> a sport coat. Hey, listen, listen. Make sure when you wear a sport coat, you wear a hoodie, okay? Keep okay. the victory when we come Fashion. back with a Vanderbilt. Uh, Game. <laughs> <A little mark. laughs> Hi, I'm Laura Ash, your West Knoxville State Farm agent. I've been here in the Renaissance for 17 years, and I'd love to help your young football players or anyone with their car insurance, home insurance, and life insurance. Give me a call at Laura Ash State Farm. I see Marcos role in the community as somebody that people can look up to. Marcos Garza is very thoughtful. He pays attention to the needs of the people in the community. He's somebody that's very unselfish, somebody that's going to always be there. Marcos Garza will work as hard as he can to get the best results for you. In the future, no matter where I'm playing, no matter what the team I'm playing for, I'll always be on Garza's team. The Garza Law Firm is Mama ZZ approved. The Garza Law Firm. Let us help. Hi, I'm David Ball, National Sales Manager here at Legend Fitness. Legend Fitness has been built on longevity and quality. Our racks are fully welded and has the least amount of bolts in the industry, made to stand up to the test of time. Because at Legend Fitness, we deliver quality and we want our customers to be legend strong. Hey, Tim Hoskins here from Covenant Sports Medicine. I'm the Corporate Manager of Sports Medicine, and I want to speak a little bit to our community partners and relationships that we have. Uh, we partner with FC Alliance Soccer, LeConte Center at Pigeon Forge, Johnson University, numerous high schools in and around the area, AAU basketball, Morristown Landing, travel hockey, volleyball, lacrosse, you name it, we're probably involved. What a lot of people don't know about Covenant Health is we're a nonprofit, community-based healthcare delivery system. We provide services in your community. If you ever need help with some event medicine or sporting event, scan the QR code at the bottom. Covenant Health, our mission is to improve lives through better health. Community banking is about location and much more. It's about family. We reside in your community. We are a part of your community. At Commercial Bank, our commitment extends beyond the walls of our branches. It's displayed each day in the opportunities we provide, the money we give back, and the time we commit, all to help improve the lives of the people, families, and businesses that make our communities great. Commercial Bank. Life made better. Keys to Victory is brought to you by Garza Law. All right, back to a serious game here. You win this, you go to the playoff. Chris? I can't wait. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up for these guys. I, I think it's going to be good. I, a fast start's important. I mean, I think when you get that going, I think it kind of just influences the rest of the game. So we need to do that. I want to see our defense create some turnovers. I think that's going to be huge. And, again, convert third downs. When you get in those moments, convert them so you can keep the ball, mm -hmm. keep them off the field, and continue to push the ball down the field. Long drives are a good thing. Vanderbilt wants to run the football. Yep. It's what they're – comfortable doing the most. So I think it's important for Tennessee to stop the run. Uh, you must limit the quarterback ability to run the football, whether it's design runs or him scrambling uh, in passing game situations. And then I think if we play with the lead early, because Vanderbilt's not really equipped to come from behind, I think Tennessee has a great chance uh, to win this game and then win the turnover margin. You do that, Tennessee should be uh, into the season 10 and 2, you, you, regular season. You guys have probably heard me say this. You know, we moved here in 1996 from Midland, Odessa. You said it five uh, times. Today. Friday, yeah, Friday, you said it five Friday. times a day. So my wife went to Odessa Permian, and, and she was a twirler in the band back then. And I know she said that the band would play in the playoffs Hawaii 5-0 because when you got to the playoffs, if you went 5-0, you were, you were a champion. Yeah. You won a championship. And so for me, the play, this is not to get in the playoff. The playoffs start Saturday. Mark, that was that was emotional. That was nice. I swing, <laughs> swing, but tear up over there. Look at it. I mean, it. My, my eyes you got need a little tissue. <laughs> my eyes got a little watery. You need a tissue. Maybe we'll play Hawaii five. No. Go win five games. No, I need a better story. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so, <laughs> I need a better story. No, it was, it was a good story. It was a good story. It was not a good story. It was a good story. It was a good story, man. No, was, when, when I'm heartfelt. telling something and you're looking up at the lights in the Raptors, it means you've tuned me out. We love you. We'll talk about the playoff of Tennessee beats Vanderbilt next week right here on the Food City Locker Room presented by Garza Law. That come, was a good story. Come back, Zakai. Yeah. We miss you, man. We need you. We need you.